Father, we come before thee once again this morning to call upon your holy name with joy and excitement as we commemorate and remember this great day that you rode into Jerusalem with all humility. And we pray that as we internalize and remember this, may it help us to come closer to you, to remember the happenings of the Holy Week, so that as you are crucified, we shall be crucified with you, and we shall also resurrect with you. I pray, Father, for these that are gathered here. As I speak your word, may you use me as a vessel to reach out to them. And as you come to bless them, may you also bless me. I pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Hosanna. Hosanna. Exactly. That is what they were singing. Hosanna in the highest because it's a wonderful day as we remember, as we recall and recollect the happenings of that particular day many, many years ago as he rode into Jerusalem on a court, people putting their clothes on the ground, people waving branches of the palm tree and celebrating for what was coming. But remember, as they celebrated to them, they thought they were celebrating a worldly king. But for us, we know we are celebrating a spiritual king and the head of the church. Kefa Murure Jenga, I love the Lord as my personal savior, by the grace of God serving in this parish as the vicar with the able leadership that is with us this morning of the re readers and the others are also in the other rooms with the teens and also the young ones. I want to recognize the presence of Dr. Reverend Dr. Mbogwa who is with us this morning and also the Mrs. Bogwa is with us. Uh, Salimia, uh, the congregation of Adali. Thank you very much. We like and we appreciate when you join us to fellowship together so we don't take it for granted and feel most welcome when you are with us this morning. I want to remind us we are on the Lenten season and when we talk of the Lenten season, as we usher in the Holy Week, there are three things before I go into the sermon that we must always be reminded. One is we need to remember the hour of recall. And what do we need to recall? We need to recall that our Savior and Christ himself came into the world, was sneered at, was jeered, was beaten, was crucified, was pricked with spears, not because he had any sin, not because he had any fault, not because he was a robber, but just because he wanted to take away my sin and your, and your sins. So every time we go through this season, may we be able to recall the sacrifice our Lord did for our salvation and for our sins to be forgiven. Once we recall, the next thing we need to do is to appreciate the second R, and the second R is to refocus or repurpose ourselves, to ask ourselves, are we walking in the ways he would have wanted us to walk in? Are we walking in the direction of his teachings? Are we living according to his commandments? And are we doing things that he would have wanted us to be doing or have we defeated and done things that he would not have wanted us to do? And then the third R is we need to remind ourselves it's a time of repentance. We need to repent our sins. The Bible says, and the book of the, uh, the liturgical book we use says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive our, ourselves. And so, every one of us, it's a time for us to repent our sins, to come closer to God, to walk in his ways, to purpose to live according to his teaching, so that on the last day, we shall be heirs of his kingdom. And reflecting on the day we are celebrating today, which is actually part of the culmination of the Lenten season, as we usher in the Holy Week, we have read scriptures from Psalm 
We also read the epistle and we also read the gospel which was done very well. And the gospel we read was Luke 19, 28 to verse 44. And that's where I want to draw my sermon from. And just for the purpose of recollection, we would appreciate, for the sake of those who might not have joined us, Jesus is headed to Jerusalem and he approached a town called Bethage and also Bethany. And this was at the hill called the Mount of Olives. And when he arrived there or when he reached there and route to Jerusalem, he sent two of his disciples as an advance party to go before him and he told them very clear instructions that they would get a colt and they would untie it and bring it to him so that he could use it to ride into Jerusalem. And when I was reflecting on the act of Jesus sending the disciples as an advance to untie the court, I found a profound lesson in that particular part of the passage that we read because the lesson here is that Jesus can take whatever we hold dear to ourselves for his own service. There are very many things we hold dear to ourselves and we say they belong to us and we say they are ours. We even go ahead and say no one can tune us but I can assure you when God wants to use it for his own service he will be able to come and take it for his own service. And then also another lesson that we learn from the passage is that whenever we praise and chant to our Lord Jesus, you must rest assured there are those that will not be happy, there are those who will try to stop us, and there are also those who will try to discourage us. As they chanted Hosanna, as they sang in joy, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were trying to tell Jesus to tell his people to keep quiet. Yet, they were praising their king, they were joyous to their king, they were arulating to their king. And that's the same thing we find ourselves in as Christians. That sometimes when we want to worship, sometimes when we want to preach the gospel, sometimes when we want to get closer to our Lord, there are those who will always come to try and stop us. There are those who try to come and discourage us. And there are those who try to make sure we do not continue praising and chanting songs of joy to our King. But one thing I can remind you this morning, as much as they try to stop you, as much as they try to discourage you, as much as they try to distract you, May you never stop because even them, they never stop because they knew who they were singing to. They knew the joy that had come into their hearts and into their minds. And we also must appreciate when, we, when Jesus came and approached Jerusalem, one of the things he did was to weep when he looked at the city. And sometimes and many times, when Jesus sees us dragging ourselves in sin, when Jesus sees us compromising to the world, when Jesus sees us conforming to the ways of the world, he is also weeping. And so, as we continue in the Lenten season, as we start the Holy Week today, may we be reminded we need not make Jesus continue weeping because of the immersion we have done of ourselves in sin, the immersion we have done of ourselves in compromise, and the immersion we have done of ourselves by compromising to the ways of the world. And so this morning, for me and you, we need to ask ourselves the question, what things have we engaged in? What things or sins of omission or even commission have we done that Jesus is weeping for us as he writes and as he looks into our lives. And also, we learn and we appreciate when we don't welcome Jesus into our lives because there were people who did not want to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. 
And the same applies to us as Christians. When we don't welcome Jesus into our lives, the enemy encircles us and will destroy us. So may we, as we continue with the Holy Week, be reminded we don't need to give the enemy a foothold in our lives. We don't need to give him a space in our lives. Because if we do give him a foothold, if we give him a space in our lives, he is going to encircle us and drown us in the sins of the world. And may God also help us to recognize the times of the Lord. As he comes to Jerusalem, many failed to recognize his entry into that particular city. And the same applies to many of us as Christians. He is trying to enter our lives. He has given us his grace. He has given us his blessings. But just like those in Jerusalem, we are failing to recognize his entry into our lives. And as Jesus entered Jerusalem, he presented himself as the Messiah. And this was quite significant. And the question also, to me and you this morning, is whether he is the Messiah in your life. Because he could be the king. He could be the Messiah. But he could be the Messiah to others, but not to you as an individual. Remember, he was the Messiah to those who are chanting and singing in joy. But he was a threat to the teachers of the law and to the Pharisees. May we not be the Pharisees. May we not be the teachers of the law who sometimes look at ourselves and think we are right and pure, but we have not welcomed God into our lives. And so these are very important things we need to remember as we usher in the Holy Week and as we celebrate his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And a few lessons for us as Christians that we can pick about his triumphal entry into Jerusalem is that as Christians we should prepare and be ready to receive Jesus in our lives. Just as the crowds of people who escorted him into Jerusalem, they not only escorted him, they received him into their lives, they received him into their hearts, and so we are also at a time like this being invited and called as Christians to prepare and be ready to receive Jesus in our lives. I don't know what is your relation and connection to Christ. I don't know whether you have received him in your life, but we are being called at such a time to receive him, to invite him, to welcome him, so that we can join with those in Jerusalem who not only knew he was their king and messiah, but they sang in joy and in excitement because they knew he was also king and messiah in their lives and in their hearts. May we purpose as we go through the Holy Week to invite him, to welcome him, and to prepare ourselves and be ready to receive him. As Christians, we should be channels of peace in our communities. Remember, there was a lot of provocation that was directed towards Jesus. There was a lot of uh, harassment that was directed towards him. But in the midst of all that provocation, he was able to maintain his cool and his peace. As Christians, as we go into the Holy Week, as we commemorate this day, may we be reminded we are supposed to be vessels and instruments of peace in our communities. And sometimes we must appreciate peace is not the absence of war. But peace is the ability to be calm in the midst of all provoca provocation. That whatever provocation is brought into your direction, as a Christian, you are able to maintain your level head and to maintain your cool in the midst of all that provocation. Because we saw that even with all the accusations and all the challenges brought to the direction of Jesus, he was able to become an instrument and vessel of peace in the entry to Jerusalem. The other aspect we need to appreciate as Christians, we should be humble and be of service 
to others. Jesus would have been able to ride on the most expensive of things available at his time as he, drove, as he rode into Jerusalem. But he chose a cult and he did it with humility. And may we as Christians, as we go to the Holy Week, may we be reminded we are called at such a time to show and demonstrate our humility. We are called at such a time to be of service to others just like Jesus was of service to others. Remember, the theme of the Tao says, if you have been looking at our banner as you enter the church, the month of April, the theme is drawn from the book of James and it's all about alms giving. And the question we need to ask ourselves, me and you included, what have you done for the last 39 days that Lent has been there? Have you been able to be a blessing to your neighbors? Have you been able to be a blessing to your own family? Have you been able to be a blessing to the community around you? Because we know that Jesus was full of humility and at the same time, Jesus was of service to others in the society. The other lesson is that as Christians, we should expect opposition as we evangelize and we should never lose hope. As you continue evangelizing, as you continue converting others, as you continue spreading the good news, rest assured, you will always be faced with opposition. I always say that in the event you are in this journey, the Christian walk of faith, and you are not facing opposition, I would want to remind you and tell you this morning, you and the devil must be facing and walking in the same direction. Because if you are walking in the same direction, he has no reason to oppose you. But if you are walking opposite him, he has every reason to oppose you. And so, may we be reminded that if you are facing opposition, we are because facing it because we are evangelizing and we are bringing many to the fold of Christ. As we continue to the Lenten season and the Holy Week, may we be able to evangelize. May we be able to withstand the opposition we face. May we be able to bring hope to others without losing hope ourselves. As Christians, we should thank and praise God for his intervention in our lives as the multitude that followed Jesus Christ in Jerusalem did. We see that the group and the crowd that followed Jesus in Jerusalem, they were praising him, they were singing to him, they were joyous, and the reason they were praising and we, they were excited is because of his intervention in their lives. And the same should apply to us as Christians. God and Jesus has intervened in our lives in very many ways. He intervened in your life this morning that as you slept and didn't know even where you are, he intervened and he was able to wake you up. Because there are people who slept and they don't even know they have died. But I can assure you, he intervened to make sure you did not die die and that you are up and you are robust and you have energy and full of his grace may we be able to appreciate whenever he intervenes we need to praise him and to praise him with joy as christians we should be bold as we witness just like the crowd that followed him to jerusalem did and declared that he was the king remember they were shouting Hosanna, which means save us, but at the same time they were saying he's the king and Messiah, Messiah. And they were professing that he's the king, they were professing he is the Messiah. And so, even for us, as we commemorate and remember this day, may we be bold to witness, just like the crowd that followed him into Jerusalem, to declare he is king. And may we not declare him, as an earthly king, may we declare him as a king and lord in our lives, that he has been able to seize our hearts and minds, he has been able to direct our thoughts so that we may live the way he expects us to live. And one of the things we appreciate in the scripture we read, if we had progressed even to the next chapter, is when Jesus entered Jerusalem, 
the first thing he did was to cleanse the temple. May we, as we go into the Holy Week, be able to cleanse the temple. And remember, the temple is our heart, our hearts. May we cleanse our hearts, may we cleanse our minds, may we cleanse our bodies, so that he can be able to get a place and a space in our hearts and minds. And remember that the cleansing of the temple was very, very significant if you have read the scriptures. And the reason why the cleansing of the temple was very significant is because the house of God should be respected and be used appropriately. And so, remember, we are called as the temples of the Lord, of the Lord. May we use uh, the temple, may you, we use our bodies for the things that would please God. May we use our temple or may we use the house of God in a respectful way and also may we use it appropriately. Not just the physical house of God, but also the spiritual house of God, of God, that our bodies are the temple of the Lord. And so as we go through the Holy Week, may we be reminded, as the temples of the Lord, we need to use our bodies respectfully and also appropriately. Then also, we must appreciate exploitation of a congregation. The other significance of his cleansing the temple is that exploitation of a congregation should not be allowed in God's house. May we never exploit each other as Christians. May we never take advantage of each other of each other. We are equals in the eyes of the Lord. We are equals in the house of the Lord. May we never take advantage of each other. The reason he cleansed the temple is because there were people who were exploiting others in the, te in the temple. As they sold and traded, they were exploiting each other. May we never exploit and may we never use the temple of the Lord for the wrong reasons. As Christians, we should may pay more attention to our inward righteousness than the external observance of rituals. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were very good in observing rituals, but they were very poor in terms of inward righteousness. May God help us as we go into the Holy Week to be rich with inward righteousness and be close to him so that we can be able to walk in his direction and be very close to him. And also we must appreciate the other significance when he cleansed the temple is that evil practices should be condemned in the church and the society at large. May we, as we go through the Holy Week, as the church and Christians bec become the voice of reason in our societies and communities. May we be able to point out evil for what it, for what it is. May we be able to point out sin in our communities and societies. The biggest challenge we have is the compromise many of us have done as Christians. That today it is very hard to tell the difference between those in the world and those who are Christians. May God help us as we go into the Holy Week to be able to point out sin in societies and communities so that we stop the aspect of making sin look like the right thing and making the right thing look like sin itself. And as Christians, we should be ready to face opposition from those who are against our actions and words. We must appreciate as you preach and propagate the gospel, as you live a righteous life, as you walk in the ways of the Lord, you are bound to face a lot of opposition. And so we must be prepared and ready to face that opposition. And also as Christians, we should practice the virtue of honesty in our dealings. Remember, the challenge and the reason he cleansed the temple is because there were people who are dishonest and people who are doing shady dealings in the temple. May we as Christians practice this virtue of honesty and dealings. And if we did, we would never talk of corruption in this country, which is 85% Christian based. And so, may we walk in the right and walk in the right direction. And as Christians, we should not discriminate against one another on the basis of either ethnic groups and 
denominations. We are headed to the elections on 9th of August. May God help us that this Lenten season and this Holy Week will help us to stop the discrimination that comes in our communities. May we be able to embrace each other just like Christ himself was able to embrace all, both Jews and the Gentile and the Gentiles. And lastly, as Christians, we should prepare ourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The world, we, as we know it, will one day end. And the thing that will remain are those who are committed to walking in the ways of the Lord, of the Lord. And so, may we be able to prepare ourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ. May this Holy Week have a difference in your lives and in my life. As he rode into Jerusalem, may he ride into my heart and mind so that I can change and purpose to move and walk in his direction and make a difference not only in my life but in the life of those I interact with in the society and in the community. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.